I've got a delta drill press and I'm running it on 120 volt. Uh, so you see you put line here and neutral here, either way, it doesn't matter. And then to change the rotation, all you have to do is change wire number 5, which is on the far right here, and number 8, which is on the far right here. And I have a very simple way to do that. So simply what I'm going to do is instead of hooking wire number 8 and wire number 5 directly up to line 1 and line uh, neutral, I'm going to put a switch in, a double pull, double throw switch. Uh, this is just the main power switch. And then this connection right here is actually in the motor um, connection box. So I'll show you the switch real quick and show you how that works. You've got six terminals on here, the two in the center on this particular switch, if you do this, your switch may be different. The center ones are the common, which means this terminal. So when you switch it in the middle, it's not connected to either one. This way, it connects this one to here, and then here it connects this one to here. So uh, it does that on each side also, and the sides are both separate. So you have, in effect, two switches operated by one handle. Double pole, meaning this, double throw, which means it's two positions. This is actually a three position switch, but um, I couldn't find one that was either one or the other that had this middle position. So uh, anyway, what it will do is when it's in one position, it will go line, will go through the main power switch, through our reversing switch to wire number eight, and then neutral will go to wire number five. And then when you switch it, it will go to this, and then to get to wire number eight, um, neutral goes here to here, through this jumper, and then to here. And you think, well, you can't connect line one to neutral. Well, this will not be here. This will be down here, providing line one to wire number five. So instead of buying a $50 drum switch to do this, which you can do, um, or an even more expensive variable frequency drive, you can buy a box of cover and a switch for about $5 and then find some cord laying around, make yourself a reversing switch. So let's do that. The first step is figuring out where you want to mount the box. Now, um, some of the easier options would be to get a piece of flat steel and drill two holes in it that match these and then bolt this to that piece of steel. Or you could glue it to the side as long as you're not getting in the way of anything. Or you could possibly use hinge screws. But what I'm going to do is put it right here in the front. That's where I personally want it. It doesn't really matter where you put the box. Next what you need to do is figure out the best hole in your handy box to use to get the wires out of the box and down along your route to where the wire goes into the motor. So I'm going to go from the motor, use those hinge screws for some clamps, and then go right up to there. So I am going to use this one on the end here. Now, you do have this little raised area right here. That's for a ground screw. We don't necessarily need to use that. I tend to go opposite that just because there's more room. Punch the knock out, and then grab it with a needle nose, twist it back and forth and it comes right out. Next you're going to need some kind of connector to protect your cords from this sharp edge in here. Um, I'm using an actual cord connector, but you can use a Romex connector or whatever will work, um, a bushing even, to protect your wires and your cords from that sharp edge. Again this is up to you, this is one I had laying around. Once you have your box mounted, it's time to do the first wire. You want to take a sharp knife, and then I do about three fingers width. It's usually enough to do terminations. And then carefully roll the knife over it. And this is kind of an acquired skill to just cut the insulation and not cut the uh, wire insulation underneath. You just want to cut the cord. And then usually there's some kind of packing material. It's usually string or cardboard or uh, plastic fibers. You can cut those off. 
And now um, I have two wire cord. I need four wires total to do this, but I did not have any cord laying around that had four wires in it. So I'm going to use two of these from the box to the motor. You can use one with four conductors inside it, but then you'd have to go buy it and it ruins the budget. Uh, this is a vacuum cleaner cord. There should be one laying around your house. If not, you could make one laying around your house. How often do you vacuum anyway? Okay. Um, you need the same size wire gauge as the motor wiring. Now, um, if the wire is the same size outside, like this, that's not a guarantee that the conductor, the copper, on the inside is the same diameter. That's what you got to worry about, the conductor size, not the physical outside size of the, the insulation. Two quick tips for you. Always leave enough wire that you can actually pull it out and work on it. Um, if you don't want to try and be in here with tools and trying to get the switch together. Also, use insulated clamps. Uh, these are metal, but they are rubber coated so that they don't wear through the coating um, if cables are moving around in them. So now that you have that uh, that mounted, the cord through the connector, run nicely. You just need to make a little loop and go into the motor. Now this one doesn't really have it, but a good practice for electricians or homeowners to do is to leave enough cord that the cord goes below the motor. That way if there's um, cutting fluid or water or anything gets on this, it drips off the bottom and doesn't run right into the motor where all the electrical connections are. Another tip is to bend the wire like this when you're cutting off that cord coating. That way you can see how deep your cut is and where it's ending. That way you don't cut into the wires. And then when you actually do get it done, you're going to want to take your wires and uh, bend them around back and forth to see if you actually cut through the insulation on the wire because if you did you need to cut it off and try again. Now that I have my wires run I can go ahead and take the cover off the motor. Now these are general instructions so yours might vary. I've got a slotted screw over here and I've got a screw through a hole here so I'll take that one out and then slide this off. Now again your drill press might be different, but mine has these little notches in it so that I can just lay the cords right up in there. So I'll go ahead and pull these out. And of course it's unplugged. Now what I need to do is find number five and number eight, which I believe are these red ones. Yep, five and eight. I'm gonna connect one set of wires where these are now, and then the other set will go to number five and number eight. With one of my cords connected line one and neutral and the other cord connected to terminal uh, eight and terminal five, we can go ahead and move to the box. Now what I'm going to be doing is taking the two wires that go to power and neutral, because I, was, I, I marked them, I should tell you that, if you're using multiple cords or multiple wires of the same color, make sure you mark them. I'm going to take these two, put them to the two common terminals, and I am going to solder them, but you could also use crimp terminals and uh, screws, or um, really it's determined by what kind of switch you get. This came with screws, but I prefer to solder it, so I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick. Okay, next we're going to take our two wires that went to uh, wire number eight and wire number five. And again, these are just the wire numbers on my drill press. Uh, your drill press may be different. These are kind of generic instructions. I'm gonna take these two and uh, tin the ends real quick, just because that's the process I'm using. If you're using crimp terminals, that's perfectly fine. I just like solder because uh, Screw terminals on stuff that vibrates tend to come apart. Okay, so now these two are going to go either end, doesn't really matter. I'm just going to put them on this end and solder those in. Okay, I went ahead and put the jumpers in without showing you, but 
um, this is wire number five and it goes to this terminal and then it jumps to the opposite side and then wire number eight is this black one comes in here to this terminal and that jumps over to the opposite side to here so when it's switched one way you get power from here to here when it's switched the other way you get power from here this black one to this white jumper to this wire so that effectively switches the two wires okay so now all we have to do is drill a hole in this plate to match the uh, size of our switch here and then put the switch in the cover put the cover on here fire it up and try it and then uh, oh, make sure you put your motor cover back on and you can uh, hold cables in place in clamps that are too big with zip ties you throw a couple more zip ties on it and it cleans it up real nice I suggest using a step bit to go through sheet metal and when you do this do not hold that cover with your bare hand uh, these things are sharp I mean if I just run my finger down the edge of that real quick it'll probably cut me but uh, if a drill bit catches in there especially just a normal spiral 135 degree drill bit gets caught in there and this thing spins in your hand you're gonna need stitches so um, clamp it lightly in the vise or lay it down flat and put your hand on top of it with a glove don't curl your fingers around it because this thing will mess you up if that catches in a drill bit but now that we've got our switch installed we just need to figure out which way is forward and which way is reverse so we'll pick a direction plug it in and go so with our switch to the right we have clockwise rotation so we can mark that as forward and then switch it to the left counterclockwise so that will be reverse Okay, something I want to share with you real quick now that we know our directions if you have a three position switch and you leave it in the middle you have a coil that's not connected and it's gonna make bad noises now the reason for that is uh, you do not have a capacitor in the circuit that big bump right there on the back of the motor that's a capacitor what it does is causes a phase shift between the two coils and it gives the motor a direction to turn um, I have to have different videos for that I'll just give you the quick basic version of it but uh, if we if we hook our coils back into the circuit by picking let's say reverse we can then start it because the phase shift we have direction now you might hear a click in the motor well you'll hear it when I shut it off too that clunk what that is is there's a, a switch and as the shaft rotates there's weights that go outward and lift this little mechanism and it disconnects the switch and when it slows down those weights come back in because they're spring loaded and it reconnects the switch and that switch engages or disengages the capacitor uh, now we put it on the other coil and it goes now this is hitting the bottom of my thumb so it's going clockwise and now if I just go up here and flip this to reverse it's still going forward now the reason for that is we didn't slow the motor down enough to re-engage that switch and have it change direction now it's in reverse if I shut the motor off see it's clockwise now it's in reverse click now I'll start it back up not touch the switch up there now it's hitting the top of my thumb it's going counterclockwise I can flip it back to forward there's nothing to cause a phase shift to make it change this is not an instantaneous reverse motor I have to shut it off click turns back on there's that clicking you hear so that's a quick explanation of if you're switching that too fast why it keeps going in the direction you don't want it to go so uh, I hope this was helpful. If you had to buy all these components yourself and you didn't have any of it laying around, I'd estimate it at about $12. So 
Uh, for me, it only cost five. I should probably title the video $10 reverse switch because that's about how much it would cost to do this all from scratch is about $10 using basic materials. So.